So today let's explore this wireless high voltage tester. Tester wireless. Push. Change battery. It seems it's supposed to indicate high voltages in four steps 2.54, 6 or 8 kilovolts. Low if it's less than 2.5 kilovolts, I guess. It doesn't say if it's AC or DC, but I assume it should be AC if it's just capacitively coupled and doesn't make any connection. You're basically just supposed to put it close to some wire or something. And this is from my friend, I have to return it. This definitely looks dodgy enough, like something from AliExpress or eBay or Temu. Definitely not like something professionals would use in Europe. I don't think it would be compliant if it makes you actually put your finger here and have something with 8 kilovolts in it, just several centimeters from your finger. It says inside, then a symbol of a battery. And what is this? And of course the weird thing about it is that it doesn't say anything about its purpose on it. So it definitely looks like some very questionable power line tester from the third world countries. But it's actually a tester for electric fences. And of course electric fences produce a very low current, high voltage, which shouldn't really be hazardous to touch. It gives you a shock but shouldn't be life threatening. And this explains why it looks a bit flimsy and cheaply built in comparison to equipment intended for power lines or distribution boxes. And of course to test it I have a high voltage transformer here, 5 kilovolts, 5 milliamps, the primary is 220 volts, 50 hertz, and the secondary is this, and the other end of the secondary is grounded, connected to the core. And of course this transformer is going to produce a little bit more, because it's not loaded and the primary is for the original 220 volts and now it's 230 volts, so actually it produces about 6 or 7 kilovolts AC. So let's use it to test this. Doji testing time of course. So the transformer is powered, the core is grounded and you can hear it buzzing and hissing. And now let's test it. Two point five kilovolts. Now nothing. Am I supposed to press it and then put it to it? Or am I supposed to press it right next to it? Or does it require a bigger piece of metal under the high voltage? Let's try. What about a high voltage hammer? With about six or seven kilovolts in it. And is this going to indicate something? Nothing? Seriously? Two point five kilovolts now. It seems to keep the reading until I release the button. But definitely not enough. This should be at least 4 or 6 kilovolts. Let's de-energize my hammer and let's take a look inside of it. It has two screws, so let's open it. Very easy to open. And that's it. There's a 9 volt battery in it. And the board held in place using two screws. No components on this side. So let's unscrew it and see. And that's it. No SMD components. It's entirely through hole and just a single sided board. Is the button here, some transistor capacitors, some resistors, the LEDs, two through hole chips, some resistor arrays it seems, another capacitor, some diode, a ceramic capacitor, and that's basically it. Here just connections and the antenna here. And it actually seems like the battery goes via the button, then it goes into this. It's not a transistor, it's actually a 78L05 regulator. It's a 5 volt regulator, a smaller version of 7805. So the battery voltage is basically regulated to 5 volts here. And then it continues into the circuitry with some chips. And these are not microcontrollers, just some op amps or comparators. Basically just comparing the voltage with some voltage divider made of the resistors and Lighting up the LED according to the voltage. And these resistor arrays are probably used as resistors for the LEDs, or at least the bigger one. And that's basically it. Let's check the battery. It seems to be new. And now of course the schematic of it. To reverse engineer it I had to first reverse engineer the resistor arrays. 
One is five separate resistors, 680 ohms, and here one is five resistors with one common pin, one mega ohm each. Here's the battery, the button, and the low battery voltage indicator is a separate part. It's an LED driven by an op amp, used in an open loop like a comparator basically, and it compares the battery voltage going from this resistive divider with the voltage drop of this diode as a reference. When the battery voltage drops low enough, the inverting input has a lower voltage than the non-inverting one, and thus the output is positive and lights up this LED. And the 78L05 regulator doesn't actually power the chips or anything, it's used here as just a voltage reference, powering just this resistive divider, which is a reference for these four comparators or pump-ups. And here's the antenna, some loading resistor, a rectifying diode, a filter with a capacitor and a resistor, and it goes into this input of this op-amp. This is basically a buffer. And there's a diode, so it only can pull the voltage up, not down. And the sensed voltage basically goes into the inputs here. But when some of the outputs flips high, it also raises the voltage at the inputs, so it actually keeps the value. And these resistors are the one mega ohm resistive array, and the LED resistors are the other array. And with no voltage measured, all outputs are low, so the red LED is lit. And this op-amp has the input connected to the lowest part of this resistive divider, so it flips high first. Then this one is lit, when this one flips high, this one is lit, when this thing flips high, this one is lit, and when the last one flips also high, this LED is lit. It always lights up just one of the LEDs. And of course this diode is necessary so it can backfeed some voltage into the inputs and remember the state, even when the output of this op-amp is at zero. And of course it doesn't measure the transformer properly because it produces basically a low frequency 50 Hz sine wave, Unlike an electric fence, which produces just one or a couple short pulses per second. The pulses from an electric fence are very short spikes, where they can also be damped oscillations, but at a higher frequency. And the antenna is capacitively coupled. The antenna capacitance basically forms a high pass filter with this resistor, so it's less sensitive to a low frequency like 50 Hz, or to any pulse with a slow rise time, or a slow rate of a voltage rise. It's more sensitive to high frequencies or sudden pulses with a faster rate of voltage rise. This is much steeper, the voltage goes up much faster. And this is why the mains voltage transformer was underestimated. And of course, yes, the output of this transformer is much more dangerous than the fence. The fence produces low current, low energy pulses. Or its power supply, I should say. And paradoxically connecting the transformer primary briefly to a battery will show more reading. When it's connected to the battery, it produces a magnetic field in the transformer core, and when it's disconnected, the magnetic field suddenly collapses, and it produces a high voltage spike or damped oscillations, and in this moment the transformer ratio does not apply. The peak voltage is much higher than the transformer ratio would suggest. And the electric fence power supply is probably using a similar principle. It uses a switching transistor, momentarily connecting the primary of a high voltage transformer or some ignition coil or something to a battery or DC power supply voltage, when the transistor suddenly turns off, it produces the pulse. It's something like this, I'm not drawing the base driving circuitry. Of course, it could be also a MOSFET. I'm also not drawing the snubber here, which is quite important to protect the transistor. And the transistor into its base or gate is getting a signal. When it turns on, not much is happening. But the moment it turns off, the high voltage pulse is created. But of course, the wireless version of the fence testers is not very accurate. The reading might also depend on how close you put it to the wire. Of course, this thing actually guides you to put it to a controlled distance from it, but still the wire diameter might vary, so the reading can be affected by it. And the conductor can be flat instead of a circular cross-section. The more accurate ones seem to have a metal hook, which makes a direct contact with the fence wire. And this is referenced to an electrode which you stick into the ground, into the soil. And this one is very similar. Or this one, this one, and so on. There seems to be a lot of them on the market. This one has to be quite inaccurate in comparison, but still could be good enough for the job. Very often you just have to indicate whether the voltage is there or not. But surely a nice example of how circuits can be designed just with basic components, no microcontrollers. It also reacts to a piezolator igniter and has a design flaw. At lower battery voltages it does not remember the state. Reducing the battery voltage gradually and it starts flipping down. Can't remember the states. So that's it. And if you like my videos, you should definitely consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon, or using the thanks button. My videos definitely take some time and effort to make. This is how you can keep this channel running. 
And big thanks to all of you who already support me.